Greetings, I'm Dr. Cho Youngjin of Seoul Deep Rooted Dental Clinic. Today I'm going to talk about diagnosis and treatment planning for implant prosthodontic treatment. First, I'm going to talk about diagnosis for implant treatment. Decisions that need to be made in treatment planning. Third, I'm going to talk about top-down treatment planning centered on prosthodontic treatment. After that, I'm going to summarize. First, diagnosis for implanted treatment. There are many factors that come into the play for successful prosthodontic treatment. Accurate diagnosis and proper treatment plan. Deft surgical procedures. Appropriate occlusal formation and maintenance. There are many factors, but most important is to make the first step right. Accurate treatment plan and diagnosis is essential for successful implant and prosthodontic treatment. If you look at the implant treatment process, it consists of different phases from diagnosis, to surgery, prosthodontic, and maintenance phase. You need to utilize different diagnostic tools to make accurate diagnosis and come up with thorough treatment plan. This is a very important step. The emphasis should not be placed only on surgery. We need to consider the form of final prosthesis when coming up with treatment plan. There are many tools available to come up with correct diagnosis. As shown, you can see the history of patient and you can do medical evaluation as well. Extra and intraoral examination needs to be done as well as radiographic exam and diagnostic casts. Also, we need to evaluate aesthetic risk factors, patient's income, and patient's expectations. For appropriate implant prosthesis to be formed, what is in the yellow box, such as extraoral examination and intraoral examination, needs to be done. To come up with a top-down approach where prosthesis is at the heart, examinations such as on overall oral health, surgical site, antagonist and adjacent teeth need to be made. First, the overall oral examination, we need to understand what caused extraction and how is oral hygiene. Tooth alignment and occlusal evaluation needs to be done. Intensity of occlusal force needs to be checked. Also check whether there's parafunctional habit and the level of jaw opening. Second, you need to do examination on surgical site. Hard tissue inspection such as ridge shape, width, height, bone quality, bone anomaly needs to be examined. Second, soft tissue inspection needs to be done. Periodontal biotype needs to be evaluated. If there is a sufficient attached to gingiva or inflammation, these need to be considered. Adjacent anatomic structures need to be examined as well. There are many important anatomical structures such as maxillary sinus, inferior alveolar nerve, and mental foramen. Radiographic analysis, diagnostic cast, oral examination, CT can be done to evaluate such sites. Let me share with you a simple case. In the case of this patient, in the upper left and right, there are problems with the prosthesis, and in the lower left and right, the teeth are missing. The four areas, all of them required implant restorations. Upon examination, 
in number 37 and 38 and 46, you can see sclerotic heart tissue lesion if implant is placed in here. I was unsure about the prognosis and it required further examination. Initially upon oral examination, I intended to place the same number of implants as the number of teeth missing but after finding out the heart tissue lesion after x-ray, I decided to avoid that area in the lower left and in the lower right, implants have been placed Avoiding such lesion, I did not place three implants as planned, but placed implants on left and right and did implant the partial denture. This is during treatment. Implants have been placed in the upper right, upper left, lower left, and right. Because of the unknown uh, sclerotic lesion, although originally I decided to place implants on top of the lesion, in the end I decided to avoid that. In the case of lower left, if I had placed in number 36, then I would have had to place three implants very close to each other. In this case, it would have been extremely difficult to secure inter-implanted distance. Therefore, I skipped an implant in the middle and did fix the partial denture by placing implants in number 5 and 7. In the case of number 46, I wanted to avoid the lesion, so I placed the implants mesially and distally. Implant provisional have been provided. In the end, the patient received the implant, fixed the partial denture. Next, examination of adjacent teeth. In the area of interest, you need to check if there is a crowding angulation or if there is adequate space. You need to check whether there is adjacent tooth with a severe root curvature. Also, you need to check the antagonist as well. Look whether there is extrusion in occlusal surface or if the cusp angle of antagonist is extremely sharp or if it's missing. With the relation with the antagonist, you need to check whether the interocclusal distance between upper and lower is lacking or not. Let me share with you a case. This is a female patient in 20s. This was at initial visit. If you look at number 11 and 12, there is a very significant tooth carious. The patient experienced immense pain in number 11. As you can see, deep bite was a very significant, lower anterior was barely visible. The caretaker wanted to know if the extreme gummy smile could be improved with anterior teeth treatment. Number 11 and 12, I decided to extract them. In the image, number 21, if you look at the angulation of the root, it's not in balance with adjacent to teeth. The clinical crown was very short. I was confounded as to how to come up with a treatment plan for that. I wonder if it was possible to provide an aesthetic prosthesis with appropriate interimplanted distance if I only extracted number 11 and 12 and did implant treatment. Number 21, it had very deep bite and lingual version was extreme. I wondered if it was possible to make implant a prosthesis that would go in balance with this. It was very difficult to make a decision. Considering various factors, I decided to strategically extract number 21. Number 11. Number 11 would be Pontic and the two implants will be placed in number 12 and 21. Fixed partial denture using implant was planned. 
In order to solve the extreme deep bite and gummy smile, I decided to open flap extensively to do crown lengthening and alveoloplasty. Along with implanted treatment, I decided to do this to provide a aesthetic prosthesis. This is at the time of surgery. Along with number 11 and 12, number 21 was strategically extracted. In number 11 and 21, implants were placed after forming implant osteotomy. Provisionals have been delivered. If you look over here, the extreme deep bite has been resolved somewhat. After that, the prosthodontic phase, Pontic was provided for number 11 and fixed partial denture using number 12 and 21 was provided to the patient. This is x-ray image after surgery. This is at six months. The patient had a little bit of disability, so the patient couldn't brush teeth properly and caries continued to occur compared with initial visit to lower anterior is quite visible and the alignment of upper anterior have been improved significantly. Therefore, the patient and the caretaker was extremely satisfied with the treatment results. Overall oral examination and examination of soft and hard tissue on the surgical site as well as examination on the adjacent teeth and antagonist needs to be done to come up with a big picture and then proceed with the treatment. It's very important. Next, I'm going to talk about the decisions that needs to be made when we come up with treatment plan. There are multiple decisions that we need to make when we come up with treatment plan. When to place the implant, how many implants to place, how thick or long should it be, when coming up with a restoration, so what kind of type should I use? What kind of loading protocol should be used? These need to be determined. You need to make sure that the patient's VD as well as the function is maintained. Also, you need to consider how to prioritize these factors. Even before the moment of extraction, you need to consider the decisions that need to be made during implant surgery and in making implant prosthesis. As shown in arrows, you need to make various decisions in different time points. I'm going to talk about what kind of decisions that I make and how I come up with my treatment plan. This is a 59-year-old male patient. The patient was very gentle and very cooperative. The patient's chief complaint was that multiple teeth were missing, and among residual teeth, some of them were mobile. The patient continued to delay the treatment and then came to the dental clinic. You can see that the lower, all teeth are missing. He received temporary flexible denture and after that he didn't receive any treatment. The patient strongly emphasized that as for the upper anterior, he wanted fixed instead of a removable prosthesis. Because he engaged in diverse social activities, he really felt strong about this. I needed to consider his history, demands, and other factors. I also looked at x-ray and examinations and the treatment cost as I came up with treatment plan. This is at initial visit. You can see that in the lower, the patient is wearing removable flexible denture. The question now is which teeth to remove in the lower, 
number 34 and 37 need to be removed. In the upper, there were not that many teeth that I could save. You can see here in a panoramic view which teeth need to be removed. These teeth can be saved. After that, you can see the strategic position where implants are to be placed. In the case of lower, I decided to place implants in number 37 and 47. In the case of lower anterior, due to multiple reasons, I decided to use a fixed prosthesis. I decided to do extraction in the upper left, and because the interarch distance was not sufficient, I placed three implants in number 4, 5, and 6. In the case of posterior upper left, I decided to place three implants from number 4 to 7. To provide fixed restoration, I decided to place two implants in the anterior area in number 1 and 3 and decided to use MS type 1 body implant so that the patient didn't have to wear removable provisional. This was the treatment plan. As mentioned, we need to figure out from where we're going to start treatment because the patient is experiencing discomfort in multiple teeth. We need to make a decision as to which area should be maintained and how to maintain the VD. Also figure out where immediate implant placement is possible and where it requires delayed placement. You also need to think about the loading protocol. It's very complicated. We need to do it step by step. Following patient's demands, in the case of number 13, immediate extraction was necessary, but I left this. I did restorations in the posterior area on both sides first. I did extraction on the left side and provided restoration first as we waited for healing. I provided restoration for the anterior area. I provided restorations for upper right. I decided to restore the upper anterior last. This was how treatment was provided. In the upper left posterior area, I did extraction, surgery was done, secondary surgery, and provisional was provided. Number 37. The residual alveolar bone in the lower was favorable, so implant was placed. The final restoration was provided. In the upper left, the temporary provisional was provided. While we waited, I used four abutments to provide a fixed restoration in the lower anterior area. Lower anterior as well as upper and lower for the left side was restored. Moving to the right side, Implants were placed in the upper right. Secondary surgery was done in number 47. Simple implant restoration was done. Restorations were delivered for upper posterior. The patient was able to chew on food. After that, I moved it to anterior area. Number 13 was extracted and number 12, one body type implant was placed and I tied it to natural tooth and provided fixed provisional as was the patient's desire. After extraction socket healing occurred somewhat, I placed the implant in number 11 and 13. I removed the temporary implant placed in number 12. I used the number 11 and 13 to provide a provisional restoration on the posterior area. Final restorations were fabricated. Final restorations were provided for the implants and natural tooth in the upper left. This was the final restoration. The treatment period was very long and it was complicated. If the treatment plan is very complicated and if you have to listen to patient demands from surgeon's perspective, it is very important to prioritize what is important and how to proceed with implanted treatment because you need to satisfy the patient. Various decisions need to be made.
I'm going to talk about the top-down planning, which centers upon a prosthesis. Top-down treatment plan means you need to consider ideal prosthesis for the missing teeth ahead, and then, after simulating it, you come up with a surgery and a series of process. The superstructure needs to be planned first, and then in line with that, you come up with the implant placement plan. Following the top-down method, in order to do this, implant needs to be placed in correct position. We need tools to make our treatment plan a reality. There are many guided tools. One guide helps us determine the implant's position, direction, and depths. On the other hand, if you have not prepared this ahead, during surgery, you can use a smart guide or a positioning guide to get correct position and direction. This is a more simple guide system. If you have not prepared one guide system ahead, you can use these simpler guide systems. With a final prosthesis in mind, you need to proceed with implant surgery. At times, this may not be possible. I want to show you my case. It's quite embarrassing. I did it approximately 15 years ago without any such preparations, and it was a disaster. The patient was middle-aged, so due to injury, the bridge using natural tooth was fractured and the patient came and emergent surgery was performed. After extraction, the buccolingual width of the bone was very limited. I was not able to consider the final prosthesis much. I just placed the implant where the bone was. I just tried to place it in the middle. Drilling was done and implant was placed. I'm sure most of you have experienced this, but when you do immediate implant placement, it is more buckly tilted than intended at the last minute. Now, after surgery, the screw hole direction became more buckly tilted. Provisional was provided. Aesthetically, this was not very satisfactory. So it made me think back and look back. If you do not think sufficiently ahead of what the final prosthesis is going to look like before or during surgery, once you reflect the flap, if you just focus on the bone, the implant can be very tilted, therefore we need to be aware. This is the same with the posterior area. If the residual alveolar bone resorption is unilaterally very severe, for example, if it is very severe on buccal side and if there's only bone on the lingual side, we need to be aware that implant may be extremely tilted. Rarely do we come across bone contour that is ideal for implant placement, so we need to bear this in mind. If you don't do that, off-axis load by occlusal force can be applied. This can lead to different mechanical complications. Even if you have chosen appropriate position and direction of implant, if you have not done appropriate depth control, there can be various problems. In the case of this problem, the path in between implant or the position of the implant looks okay, but implants have been placed too shallow. This has led to very thin soft tissue thickness, the final abutment's abutment color was too short. I think this was the shortest stuck abutment available. 
The emergence profile and emergence angle was very unfavorable, and there were difficulties in hygiene management. With long-term use, marginal bone resorption occurred, leading to peri-implantitis. Position, angulation, as well as steps are all very important. I want to end off by showing you another case. This is a male patient in 70s. As you can see, in the upper, the patient was wearing full denture, and in lower, he was wearing partial denture. The abutment of the denture failed and fractured, and as caries occurred, the patient complained of teeth and lower denture. As for the lower partial denture, the patient has been using it for 7-8 years, and the patient also had a partial denture for the upper. The patient received a temporary full denture after extraction at a different dental clinic and has been using it. The patient did not have a problem with the denture in the upper, but as for the lower, it was loose and it caused pain. And the patient wanted the minimum intervention. Looking at radiographic image, there's only lower anterior teeth left. You can see the extraction socket, and you also can see teeth that needs to be removed. The patient was using repaired complete denture for the upper. The patient did not have any resistance against using denture. In the lower, you can see that abutments were lost and the patient was experiencing a lot of pain. The patient's age was in mid-70s, so the patient was applicable to receive insured implant. Because the patient was complaining about the lower denture, I decided to mix and use insured and non-insured implants to provide fixed restoration. The patient did not feel any discomfort regarding the upper, so I decided to make a new complete denture for the patient. The patient emphasized that without denture, he was unable to chew food. Therefore, the plan was to provide immediate placement and immediate temporization. This was an initial visit. The patient came in in the middle as well. The patient was wearing full denture for the upper, and the lower the abutment's condition worsened. This was when the patient came in for treatment. This is clinical image before surgery, and in the lower, you can see teeth that require extraction. Because extraction, immediate implant placement, and temporization was planned, I used the oral scanner. I did final virtual planning in the lower, number 44, 46, 34, and 36. I decided to place four implants. I made a guide. One guide was used. Drilling was done after extraction and plant placement was done. One fit abutment was used in lower right. In bone defect, graft was done. This is after surgery. On the unilateral side, a stock abutment was used to get it insured. On the other side, one fit abutment was used. Provisional restoration, which was prepared ahead, was provided to the patient on the same day so that the patient could have meals. This is after two months of healing. Denture was provided for the upper and fixed restoration was provided for the lower. Let me summarize. For successful implant prosthodontic treatment, there are many important factors. Most important of all is thorough diagnosis process. You need to come up with a very precise treatment plan. You need to think of the prosthesis ahead as you come up with your treatment plan. When you come up with treatment plan, there needs to be multiple decisions that need to be made from number of implants to delivery of prosthesis and loading protocol. These need to be considered. You need to make sure function and validity of the patient is maintained. If it is complicated, you need to prioritize the different processes. This is a very important decision-making stage. Successful implant prosthesis does not result coincidentally. 
and needs to be carefully thought out and planned. You need to think of different treatment options that could be applied to a patient. Prioritize what is important and systemically you need to determine the order. There can be many different options and treatment plans. We need to acquire the relevant knowledge and experience to provide such treatment. Today I talked about treatment plan for implant prosthesis. To make a good implant prosthesis, there needs to be many factors involved. First and foremost, you need to prepare thoroughly and come up with a very precise treatment plan. Also, it requires knowledge and a direct and indirect experience. Thank you for watching.